Welcome back to Wall Street Week. During this election season, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and even Donald Trump have had less than nice things to say about Wall Street. The Obama, the Obama administration he has even scuttled some proposed mergers. We all know what's happened with the war on coal and what it's done to that industry. And, and just this week, Bernie Sanders blasting Disney, saying it helps to create income inequality, prompting a sharp response from CEO Bob Iger. Let's bring in the Fox Business All-Stars, Liz Klayman and Charlie Gasparino. Charlie, it's probably going to get worse this election season, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, nothing's off limits. Disney? <laughs> I mean, you, 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 really, you, you really know that. You've got to be a real disgusting Stalinist socialist to attack Disney of all companies. The companies that, you know, this is, this is a very progressive company. I mean, they were among the first to uh, embrace uh, gay rights. I mean, they, they, Bob Iger is far from some right-wing lunatic. And, and this knucklehead goes out there. And, you know, I'll tell you, Donald's calling him Crazy Bernie, right? He sounds crazy when he attacks Disney. Now, the overarching theme, though, I, I think you're right. So, okay, but why is he so popular? Is it an no, indictment of our public educational system that people don't listen, understand the failures of social? Listen, here, here's here's you look at what's happening at the Trump rallies. We have leftist kids who are either in college or just left college, violently protesting. You know what, what's happening here, and this is the scary thing about this election. But these um, are paid protests. But, uh, some I, of them are. Some of them are not. Listen, some protests. some of. Occupy Wall Street, which I covered extensively, was paid. A lot of it wasn't. They were kids. And I think the, the sort of animosity to free speech that goes on, particularly right wing free speech that goes on in campus, is now, is, is now basically overflowing to what's going on here and it's, it, what's going on in the election. And it's very scary. Anthony, to your point about uh, Disney, you look at Disney, and, and you can even put Bob Iger aside, go all the way back to Walt Disney, mm -hmm. 1965. This is a guy who looked at swampland in. Mm -hmm. Orlando and said, I'm Created going to build city. it up hundreds of thousands of jobs. So mm -hmm. Disney and companies like that have done what the government can't seem to do, and that is create jobs. Yeah. Now, when you want to talk about dollars and cents and minimum wage, etc., or they don't like the dress code, that seems to be the one big complaint when you, you well, go on the websites of people. You know, Charlie, what, so what? what? You can Charlie, figure those things out. Let's move away from Disney and talk right. about Wall Street. Um, and populism. And populism. Well, well just about Wall Street. Right I mean, you and I have spoken for right. years, I mean, Charlie's decades. Charlie's a huge fan of Wall Street. He in in, terms, of, Wall in Street. terms of the industry. What's going to happen between now and November in terms of the attacks on this industry, which, as you know, is already under tremendous right. pressure? And it's somewhat bipartisan. Your friend Donald Trump, as much as he embraces you, has attacked Wall Street uh, time. Although he's now that he needs their money, he's kind of backed away a little funny bit. Funny how that works. Yeah, funny how that works. Um, I don't think it's so much that. I think what it is is that he's uh, tapped into the populism. You know, but, but, here's but, the but thing. you know what? There's there's reasons to throw. Okay, but I'm going to tell you this. There it have is, been bad actors some, some, on Wall Street. Some bad you know actors. That. But let's, be, let's, let's rewind the videotape about the financial crisis. What was the financial crisis? Well, if you listen to Michael Lewis and uh, The Big Short, I watched the movie, they must have said Wall Street is ripping off the individual 400 times. Now, as someone who covered that extensively and knows and, and beat up on Wall Street plenty, I could tell you that it was less of a ripoff and more of banks literally handing money to people that couldn't pay them, pay it back. Right. That was the scandal. That so the well, average America was imposed by the government. Charles. Of course, and that's there the a, problem. There, so the, there was a circuit. So there. you have you have a couple things going on. You have the liberal media uh, basically prevent you know pr uh, proposing propaganda. You have it being basically um, reiterated and repeated on college campuses, and uh, you know you have political candidates that are trying to seize on it, some at the far end, like Bernie Sanders, and some in a, in a lighter way, like, I, I guess lighter way, somewhat lighter way, in, in Donald Trump. But some of this is just conversation, guys. The, the R word, regulation. If you really want to go to the one thing that has hurt businesses, whether it's Wall Street or whether it's small businesses, it's the tens of thousands of regulations that have been imposed, not just during the Obama administration, but George Bush was hardly sort of a regulatory restraint and a model to well, be held up. To come that. on. Bernie Marcus says he could not start Home Depot today, Gary, if right. we had the same. Well, I don't think. Well, let's be real clear here. I mean, the last eight years, Liz, I mean, you can't compare the, the regulations that Obama has imposed, the Dodd, particularly on Dodd Frank, and what that, that's done to lending at the small. I mean, listen. You, it's hard to get a loan if you're a small business. It's not because of George Bush. I'm not saying George Bush was perfect, but I am telling you, if anything, George Bush, you know, was was regulatory, you know, light compared to what's going on now. Liz, Liz Charlie brought up about the housing crisis, and one of the highlights of this past week was um, the Clinton campaign released this commercial 
where they had uh, Donald Trump with a soundbite saying that he hoped that housing prices went down. And then his end of that was that because he is a buyer of assets when they go down. Did you think that that backfired as far as trying to no, rile people up? No, and what, um, what, what was you your know, thought look, of that? Uh, people who are in the real estate industry at certain points love to see prices go down so they right. can scoop things up exactly. at good prices. You know, we've talked to Ara Hovnanian of Hovnanian over the past several years. During the crisis, you had the actual plots of land going way down in price. And the first thing they thought was, and this wasn't just Hovnanian, a lot of these home builders wanted to go in and buy. That's what you do. You think, seven years of feast and then you buy during the famine. The I, I think it that? will be. And here's where it will I think it is. Well, here's where I think it will be. It's not politically effective now. She's got a problem. She's got Bernie Sanders, right? So she's actually fighting two opponents right now. But when it comes, if, if she doesn't get indicted, which is always a possibility given all this email stuff we keep reading, uh, you know, so she stays in office, she gets Bernie Sanders out of the way, that type of argument does resonate with a lot of people. Romney faced that argument and got crushed. I think it failed, Charlie. I think it failed. You, you spent the week. You traveled with Donald yeah, this week. I, I traveled. So when that, when that, you, what did he say when that was in that, when I, that came out? Well, uh, he said in New Mexico, he said that listen, I'm a business person. That's what business people are supposed to do. I think people want the problems fixed, and I think this will be he an might election. Be right, but I will now. say. Who's going to best fix the problems? And by the way, the problems are in the lower and the middle class. Yeah, but, but, you know, but, those, really but those are the people yeah. most susceptible to that class warfare argument. I'm going to say this. I, I think we should kind of tune out essentially what's happening now to a certain extent and think about what it's going to be if, if Clinton goes against Trump directly. These type of arguments do resonate, and that's where he's going to have his. That's where it's going to be rubber meets the road. Now, a lot can happen between now and then. Bernie Sanders is not giving up; he's allowing what Trump. If Bernie Sanders wins California, your home state, Liz. What happens? Okay. Then? Uh, what happens then? That is going to be terrible for Hillary Clinton. But if you're talking about smart money, big money, Barry Diller, for example, has said of IAC, "I'm going in. I will spend." what it takes to defeat Donald Trump. You just have it. Listen, they're two New York businessmen. If you don't live in New York, you know that these are two guys who might avoid each other because it's yeah. just business. But Dar but Barry Diller, he Barry Diller really him. does not like Donald yeah. Trump. He will put money in for Hillary. Jeffrey Katzenberg, uh, mm -hmm. Eli Bro, these are people you who have the, past, the yeah, coin 66, and they will fight negative to attack make it good for you know, Money hasn't worked yet. Uh, Liz and Charlie, thanks for joining us that's for a, Wall Street Week. Statement. Money has not worked yet. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, next week, our guests are going to be Charles Schwab's chief investment strategist, Liz Ann. Saunders and Mark Asset Management founder Morris Mark. We'll see you then.